Hello Fiber Friends! If you've ever watched one of my spinning tutorials and thought, I wish I could see the whole spinning wheel, this is the video for you. I am going to introduce you to my four spinning wheels. I have two wheels that I purchased used as vintage wheels. Those are my go-to regular everyday spinners. And then I have two wheels that are antique wheels that are each a restoration project. So let's get started and meet the wheels. Hi Fiber Friends, welcome to my channel. If you're enjoying my videos and you'd like to show your support, please click the like button. Make sure that you've subscribed so you don't miss a video. And while you're here, make sure to leave a comment. All right, let's get back to the show. This is the first wheel that I ever got. It is an Ashford Traditional. It's an older Ashford Traditional. This one is from the 1960s. Ashford has a very useful chart that I will link in the description below. If you come across an Ashford Traditional and you want to date the wheel and figure out when it was made, you can use this chart and it will tell you to look for specific features. The thing that helped me figure out when this wheel came from, aside from the owner saying when she bought it, <laughs> The club-shaped maidens changed from the 1960s to the 1970s when they became more of a flame shape. And uh, that's how you can tell if it's a 1960s or a 1970s wheel. This wheel came with a dark stain on it that wasn't really my preference. And so I decided I would do a project to give her a make lift. I rubbed her down with sandpaper and then I did a chalk paint for the lighter white color, I did some distressing and then I added my own stencil details to make her my own. Because I spend a lot of time with this wheel. It was my first wheel, it's my simplest wheel mechanically and it's still definitely my go-to wheel. As far as her other specs, uh, she is a single drive and she has a scotch tension setup. The newer Ashford Traditionals have an option. Sometimes you can switch it to a double drive or a Scotch Tension setup, but not these older Traditionals. They're just single drive with a Scotch Tension. This is the second wheel I got, and you might be looking at her thinking, hmm, what is that? It sort of looks like an Ashford Traditional, but it sort of looks like an Ashford Elizabeth. Here's why. I replaced her drive wheel uh, her original drive wheel suffered some damage, and I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see. There's a big crack running through the whole hub. It was repaired with some sort of hot glue. It almost looks like hot glue, but it's not. It was repaired incorrectly, and it causes it to spin a little wonky. So that wasn't great. And then I decided that I was not going to read the bottle carefully and that I would oil my wheels with fray check rather than spinning oil. I use sewing machine oil. So the fray check, still on there, is uh, there. The fray check left this gummy film all over everything. It looks like when you pour Elmer's glue all over your hand in kindergarten and then you peel it off and it feels really cool. Well, it's not really cool when it's all over your spinning wheel. So because this wheel had some problems anyway, I had a backup drive wheel. It's an extra wheel from an Ashford traditional. So at this point, I decided that I would just swap the wheels because I tore the whole thing apart anyway. Well, my husband did. So at at this point, I decided to just swap the drive wheels and put a wheel from an Ashford Traditional on <laughs> the Elizabeth body. So she's a little bit of, I guess, technically a Franken wheel, but she spins just fine. The main difference between the traditional wheel and the Elizabeth wheel is that the Elizabeth wheel is a little bit more of a production wheel, and so it's meant for a higher capacity of spinning because it's a little heavier, it spins longer. So that's mainly the only difference. If you had never spun on an Elizabeth, if you'd only spun on a traditional, it would probably feel like a traditional. Having spun with the Elizabeth wheel, I can feel the difference, but it still works for me. 
So if I already had an Ashford traditional, why did I get the Elizabeth? Well, for one, she was a great deal. I got her used. She's from the 1980s. This is the first model of Elizabeth that they made. They have a newer model now. Uh, but the main reason was because I got this wheel with the bulky flyer and bulky bobbin setup. This allows me to spin art yarn and thicker, chunkier yarn because the capacity of the bobbin is uh, larger, it holds more yarn, but also the orifice is bigger, so I can get thicker yarn on there. Uh, this is the standard Ashford traditional or Elizabeth bobbin, and then this is the bulky Ashford traditional if you have the setup or Elizabeth if you have the setup bobbin. I believe that these also work on the Traveler. I'm not sure about the Kiwi. I would have to check. I'm not affiliated with Ashford. I just like the wheels that I got, so. She works great when I'm spinning an art yarn or a bulky yarn, textured yarn, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is my go-to wheel, and this is the wheel that you'll see in a lot of the tutorials because of the bulky, um, the bulky flyer and the bulky bobbin. And the other great thing about having a bulky bobbin is that I can ply onto it. So if I spin on the traditional that I have, I'll take a couple bobbins full and then put them together as applied yarn onto the bulky bobbin. And that's just so convenient. Next up are my two restoration projects. These are both antique wheels. And the first one I'm going to show you, I have named Tulip because I think the spokes on the drive wheel look like tulips. What do you think? Do you name your wheels? If any of you watching name your wheels, let me know in the comments below because maybe I'm just a big weirdo, but I, I mean, I'm still okay with that, but. <laughs> so Tulip, there's a little bit of a story here. Tulip came from South Dakota by way of Sweden. <laughs> uh, she was made in Sweden, came over on a boat when people were on mass coming over to America in the mid to late 1800s. That's when she is from. And she stayed within a family, passed down, and used as, used as a decoration, you know, eventually. Um, so they had all the pieces to her, but the owners of this wheel were downsizing and moving into a retirement home and didn't want to have as many things with them, but they wanted this wheel to go to someone who would appreciate it. And so I said, well, sure, I guess I'll take it. <laughs> so she came with me and she is the first of my two restoration projects. I feel a little bit of a connection to this wheel because my great, great grandmother was a spinner as well. And she was Swedish and had a wheel probably just like this wheel. And who knows, maybe they knew each other. Maybe they were on the same boat. Who knows? All right, so she's been in a box since I moved. I'm gonna unpack her and put her together and let's take a look at Tulip. I just recently filmed a distaff video for Distaff Day with a tutorial if you'd like to make your own distaff. Uh, in that tutorial that I just did about a week ago, <laughs> I was talking about how the extension piece for the distaff that goes on the Ashford Elizabeth was missing. Guess where it was? It was in the box with Tulip. Well, here it is. This attaches to the Ashford Elizabeth. It attaches to the table just like this. And then there's the hole for the distaff. And it just plops right in there. That's all it is. It's a very simple piece. I wasn't too concerned about it being missing because honestly, this could be there's many ways to work this out. I'll show you the distaff in a minute though because it, I believe, has found its new permanent home in my other new to me antique wheel. All right, let's focus on Tulip. I don't know. Oh, it's my son's baby blankets. Here are the maidens. You can see the hole where the flyer goes in this one, and then this one has this leather piece that holds the flyer.
that I have her out, I'm seeing how dry she is. This bobbin uh, was cracked to begin with. A dog got a hold of it before I rescued her, and these were the pieces that she still had. Um, but I, I can see how brittle the wood is, and I really think I need to do some work on her before I put her together. Uh, she's gone through a move across states. We were in Wyoming. Now we're in Illinois. She needs some TLC. So I'm glad to have gotten her out. I will dust her off. These are all the pieces, and this is what a spinning wheel looks like when it is taken apart. Uh, but here is the most amazing thing that happened with this wheel. This is the treadle, and this is the piece that goes into the treadle. It screws in there, and then uh, this is what goes into the leg. These are the pivot points of the, of the treadle piece. And when I got it, I saw something on here like this uh, stuck on there. You can see the mark where it's missing from. And I thought, oh man, you know, it split. It did split. Someone repaired it. This is a wedding ring. Someone repaired this wheel with a wedding ring. And they even, they even coated over it with stain so that it matched the wheel and we didn't even realize it is actually gold. Someone had this wheel, the treadle split and they repaired it with a wedding ring. This is an actual gold wedding ring. There's, uh, it's worn down pretty hard but you can still see there's a little crown symbol on it and there's an 18K on the inside. Can you imagine having this wheel and thinking, well, we still have to spin, but it broke. What can we use? A wedding ring. And then my imagination started running wild because I thought, you know, what if someone made it, uh, <laughs> but they couldn't get married, but they, they gave their love a spinning wheel and she brought it to the new world. And there was the hidden symbol of their love. I don't know. <laughs> Ah, my brain runs away with me. I could write some fantastic stories. Probably it was just there and uh, useful. <laughs> Not much to work from, I guess, if you're a pioneer in South Dakota way back in the day. So this is my antique Swedish restoration project. And I'm going to leave her on the table because I'm going to go get some oil and give her a good wipe down. Uh, let her soak up some moisture. So as I said, I did put this distaff on this wheel. This is an Ashford distaff. I put that there for distaff day to see if it would fit, and it did, but right now I'm going to remove that so we can just see the wheel herself. This is my most recent acquisition, another antique wheel that I will be restoring. I have different goals for these two wheels. The Swedish wheel, the black wheel that I call Tulip, I believe can be restored to actually function the way that it originally functioned. This wheel has already had some attempted restoration done to it. Uh, it's never gonna be back to its original condition. But I think that having one wheel to accurately restore and one wheel to find ways to restore, I think that both of those are sort of historical experiments that are valuable because learning ways to make an old wheel run again, I think that's a valuable thing. Uh, and that's what I'll be doing for this wheel. Now, when I got this wheel, my husband and I had a conversation in the car driving away, which was a little bit of an experiment for my channel. It's a little podcast style, but we talked about some different things that I like to look at if I'm looking for a wheel to figure out what kind of condition it's in. And I had my husband guest star <laughs> with me to share his knowledge and some information from a mechanics perspective. So I'm going to give some up close, detailed pictures and uh, little video clips of my wheels and you can enjoy our car ride, bring a knitting project <laughs> or a spinning project. Um, 
yeah, you can enjoy our car ride and hopefully learn a few things. I know I did. Uh, just from a mechanical point of view, what to look for if you're looking at an antique wheel. Those are my four spinning wheels. I will see you soon with many more tutorials to come. Make sure you're subscribed and happy spinning.